Hello everyone, my name is Tong. Today I'm going to make a presentation about our new work, Developing Real-Time Scheduling Policy by Deep Reinforcement Learning. Developing scheduling policies for multiprocessor real-time systems is always challenging work. The multiprocessor scheduling problem is NP-complete. In practice, the complete knowledge of task behaviors is unlikely to be available. The arrive interval and execution time of tasks may be uncertain. Besides, real-time systems usually have non-negligible system overhead, such as primitive overhead, migration overhead, and scheduling overhead, which may violate the assumption of real-time scheduling policy. Heuristic policies have been investigated, such as global earliest deadline first and least slack time first. These policies are simple to implement, but usually do not perform well. They are not optimal for multiprocessor scheduling. Only PFAIR is prone to be optimal for periodic tasks when system utilization is less than the number of processors. However, the runtime overhead of PFAIR is too high from the implementation point of view, and it is not suitable for a periodic tasks. Moreover, developing customized policy for specific system requires complete prior knowledge of the system. It is also very costly. For developing high-performance real-time scheduling policy for multiprocessor systems, one ideal approach is developing an artificial expert on real-time scheduling. That is, implementing a method that can automatically generate customized policy for specific multiprocessor system. With the advent of AlphaGo, reinforcement learning has gradually become a hotspot in the artificial intelligence research area. Deep reinforcement learning, the integration of the reinforcement learning and deep neural network has greatly promoted successful applications in solving real-world complex decision tasks. In reinforcement learning, the agent learns to take optimal actions in an environment with Markov property, which means that the next state depends only on the current state and is conditionally independent of the past. During learning, the agent interacts with an environment by perceiving states, taking actions, and obtaining rewards. Reinforcement learning can be reformulated as a Markov decision process with a set of states and action, a transition, as well as a reward function. Reinforcement learning is a promising approach to develop the artificial expert. On the one hand, the real-time scheduling process has Markov property. On the other hand, reinforcement learning is good at solving such massive search problem. Above all, reinforcement learning learns the policy online by interaction with the environment, meaning that it is needless for complete knowledge of tasks and tolerant for system overheads. However, learning scheduling policy is not a trivial thing. In most real-time systems, a periodic tasks may have more than one active instance so that the number of instances continuously changes during system runtime. Hence, the number of the system states grows exponentially with the number of the instance, resulting in poor convergence for reinforcement learning. This phenomenon is called the curse of dimensionality. Moreover, the reward function design for reinforcement learning has a significant influence on the performance of learned scheduling policy. Before deep deterministic policy gradient is a classic policy gradient method based on actor critic, which uses deep neural network to approximate Q value function and policies. It trains Q value function by Bellman describing our work. I would like to give a brief description of the reinforcement learning methods. Since the goal of the agent is to maximize cumulative reward, a more common approach is to use policy gradient methods, which seeks to directly learn the policy that predicts the optimal action given the current state. The value function of a policy is a prediction of the expected accumulative future reward. Actor critic method learns the value function of current policy for updating the policy. The Q value function is the expected cumulative reward for selecting action in a state error and policy by gradient of the Q value. There are some important applications that involve interaction between multiple agents. Markov game is a multi-agent extension of the Markov decision process. Each agent has different observation of the environment. 
The reward could be global for all agents or individual for each agent. Directly applying single agent reinforcement learning algorithms to multi agent sighting by treating other agents as part of the environment is problematic. As the environment appears non stationary from a particular agent's view, violating Markov assumption required for convergence. The extension of deep deterministic policy gradients in multi agent sighting is multi agent deep deterministic policy gradients. The core idea is to train a centralized Q function for each agent which conditions on global state and actions of all agents to alleviate the non-stationary problem and stabilize training. The system considered in this paper has M identical processors and schedules a set of N real-time tasks. We focus on designing a scheduler for a periodic tasks. We only consider individual task instance that is jobs an active job is a task instance that has been released but has not been completed. Different jobs do not have precedent relations and do not share resources except the processor. The tasks are primitive and independent. That is, a job's arrival of a task will not be affected by other tasks. It should be noted that multiple instances of a single task may exist at some point. Here, we start with the simple system model to introduce how to schedule based on reinforcement learning. One can easily extend this paper's work to other complicated systems model, which will be mentioned later. The purpose of a real-time scheduler is to find an optimal order to execute the active jobs, is bearing by most heuristic schedulers. We intuitively design the reinforcement learning policy's input as a sequence of job parameter, and output a sequence of corresponding job priorities. So we use reinforcement learning to find a mapping from jobs to priorities. Since most heuristic schedulers derive the priority from the corresponding jobs parameters, a straightforward way is using a feedback neutral network to represent the policy and derive the priority for each job separately. However, it ignores the interrelation between all active jobs. In order to deal with the variable length sequence, Another way is using the recurrent neural network and the encoder-decoder architectures as policy. The encoder-decoder has been widely used in the neural net language processing, which maps a variable length sequence input with output. For real-time systems, the scheduling overhead is critical and should be much less than task execution times. Policies with lower overhead tend to be more practical. The encoder-decoder often have higher computational overhead than fit-forward neural network. Moreover, neural network policy has high parallelism. Thus, we use fit-forward neural network as policy. We use some global information of all active jobs as input to help decision-making. In addition to the deadline and the remaining execution time, the average, maximum, and the minimum deadlines and the remaining time for all jobs are also used as input to the policy neural network. The output is priority for the corresponding job. The decision time is only when a new job arrives. Since there are no explicit criteria for what neural network structure should be used for what kind of application, the number of layers and the number of neurons in each layer of the policy neural network are often determined empirically. We intuitively regard each job as an agent because they follow a decentralized policy to determine the priority, respectively. Then, we reformulate the real-time scheduling decision process as a Markov game. Each system state consists of n vectors. Each component is a state of the corresponding agent. An agent's state is a parameter of job, such as remaining execution time and the absolutely deadline. It may have some extra characteristics of jobs in some complicated systems. The action of each agent is its priority, since the goal of reinforcement learning is to maximize the expectation of cumulative reward. The performance of learned policy depends largely on the reward function. We derive the reward function by objective function transformation from real-time scheduling to reinforcement learning.
to ensure the performance. The goal of real-time scheduling is to schedule jobs to make as many jobs as possible to meet their deadline, that is, to maximize the success ratio. Therefore, an ideal learning algorithm should learn a policy that can maximize the expectation of success ratio. The objective of real-time scheduling is to find a policy that maximizes success ratio. The above objective is equivalent to maximize Sg minus Fg. We discreted the scheduling process by a processor time unit. The reward function is denoted the number of jobs whose completion time equal to t and meet their deadline minus the number of jobs whose absolutely deadline are t and missing their deadline. The transition of Markov game selects m jobs with highest priority for execution so that their remaining execution time will reduce. The information of the job sequence is variable length and unordered, making it difficult to estimate the Q-value. We use the symmetric function to aggregate the information from each job. The symmetric function takes n vectors as input and outputs a new vector invariant to the input order. We propose self-cooperative learning in this paper. The main idea of self-cooperative learning is to approximate a centralized Q function by applying a symmetric function on individual Q function. Besides, jobs that miss their deadlines or complete within deadlines will be removed from the active task set. In addition, the system may generate new task instance. As we can see, the number of jobs is constantly changing and independent of each other making it difficult to estimate the value function for reinforcement learning. This is a framework of learning scheduling policy. The agent, that is, the scheduler, uses the policy neutral network to interact with a real-time system. Experiences from each interaction will be stored in a replay buffer. For each training, a batch of experiences is sampled from the replay buffer and used to train the neutral new network using a loss function, and then the parameters of the policy neutral network is updated in order to maximize the cure value. We improve multi-agent deep deterministic policy gradients to learn the scheduling policy. Next, I will explain how to learn scheduling policies for a variable length job sequence. We try to estimate individual cure function by the global reward rather than the local reward. Suppose RIT is the local reward of agent I at time t. In cooperative games, the global reward is incurred by all agents' actions, so the global reward RT is the expectation of all local rewards. The individual Q value function can be expressed by Bellman equation. Time t is omitted. Sum all agents' Q value and then divide the number of the agent. We get the following formula, which can calculate the centralized Q value by the global reward. Let the formula equal to the centralized Q value, we finally get the symmetric function G. And then we can estimate the centralized Q value function. The objective of policy is to maximize the expectation of centralized Q value and the loss function of the Q network is the expectation of Bellman error. We use the gradients of the objective and the loss function to train the policy neutral network and the Q network. We evaluate the performance of the proposed reinforcement learning approach. We first train reinforcement learning policies on a Ubuntu server with two Tesla P100. The simulation is programmed by Python. PyTorch, an open source Python machine learning library, is used for realizing neutral networks. We use desktop without any GPU resource to evaluate the learned policy. More than 1,000 randomly generated task sets are used for training and evaluating the scheduling policy. We empirically design the architecture of the neural networks.
First, evaluate success ratio under different loads in eight processor systems. For the simulation data to be presented, each data point on each curve in the figure is the average of 15 experiments, each carried out for a sufficient long time. For fairness, in each experiment, the same random job sites are used to evaluate different scheduling policies. The granularity is defined as the ratio of execution time to deadline. The reinforcement learning policies are always performed better than heuristics under different loads and granularities. Then, we evaluate the success ratio over different number of processors. The results show that our reinforcement learning approach can learn sound policies for real-time systems with different numbers of processors. A weighted reward function could be used to learn the policy. For real-time tasks with precedent constraint, usually represented by a direct learning approach, has good potential to extend to real-time systems with various characteristics. It can be easily extended to periodic tasks, non-preemptive tasks, or uniprocessor systems. Furthermore, if the systems that execute real-time tasks having weights we simulate the realistic real-time systems with non-negligible preemption over height. To learn scheduling policy in such systems, a new feature that indicates whether the job is running on a processor must be added to the neural network's input as a crucial feature. We show the learning process of the reinforcement learning policy use global EDF to schedule the same task sets in each episode as the baseline. During the learning process, the success ratio of the reinforcement learning policy increases gradually and exceeds the baseline in about 80 episodes. It demonstrated that reinforcement learning approach can also learn high performance policy for realistic real-time systems with various characteristics, a cyclic graph. The graph neural network could be employed to compute the priorities for such task sets. We will optimize our method in generalization and convergence by using other learning algorithms or function approximators. As another follow-up work, we plan to apply the reinforcement learning approach to realistic applications. We also intend to extend our work to the feasibility test for hard real-time multi-processor systems. Thanks for listening.